Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to New Hope in the Lord. I'm Reverend Joseph, your host, and I thank you uh, for watching our broadcast today. I have a question for you. If there was a relative of yours that was walking across the street and was going to get hit by a car, and somebody ran in front of the car to save your relative, and the person that ran in front of the car was killed, but your relative was saved, what would your reaction be? Well, most people's reaction would be that they would be indebted to that person for the rest of their life. Uh, that's in the natural form. So I want to bring it into a spiritual form. Uh, when the scripture says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And basically what the scripture was saying is, is that everyone that was born uh, after Adam and Eve sin deserved death because of the disobedience towards the Lord. The scripture also says, um, all we like sheep have gone astray. Uh, none has seek after God, no, not one. So basically uh, what happened was, is that Jesus uh, ran across the street and um, took the car to hit him so that all of mankind could be saved. He hung on the cross willingly. Uh, the Bible says no, no, nobody took his life. Um, he willingly gave his life so that all who call upon the name of the Lord, like my guest, um, Karen Medina, um, could be saved. And so that's our prayer today, ladies and gentlemen, that if you don't have a relationship with Christ, let Christ come into your heart so that he'd be the person that stood in front of that car to take the hit instead of you. Karen, thank you for coming on our show today and sharing uh, the love of God uh, that you came to eventually know. Um, but nobody knows Christ when they're born. They have to become a Christian. Nobody's born a Christian. So why don't you just start to share uh, with us about your upbringing uh, were your parents religious? Uh, did you go to church? Uh, did you like church? Okay. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on your show. I appreciate it. And I just want to, you know, um, give honor and praise to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, yes, uh, I was brought up uh, in a Catholic home. Um, my parents, unfortunately, were not very religious. Um, I think when we were younger, you know, they went to church. And as we got older, um, they did not go to church any longer. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so that was something that we did on our own. We got to a point where we were, you know, uh, teens and we would walk. I had uh, four sisters. We would walk to church together. Um, and it wasn't um, because we wanted to go, to be honest. It was uh, because we had to go. Um, and that was uh, at the um, request of my parents. Even though they didn't go, we, we had to go. And, and Karen, that, that's prevalent. Um, a, a lot of parents make their children go, but uh, they don't go. Um, and you, you didn't want to go. It's like uh, you must finish your vegetables or else. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you have to eat those vegetables or else. And so basically, uh, Karen, did that cause some rebellion uh, to be in your heart um, towards your parents? Um, no, I don't think so. I, I think it just caused um, a little confusion as to, well, why aren't they going and we have to go, you know, but no rebellion. No, I wasn't a rebellious kid. Um, honestly, I always I always loved um, going to church. I always loved God. I always loved the Lord. Um, you know, so I guess being a teen though, you, you kind of don't understand why your parents make you do certain things 
when they go, because I said so, you know, you, you really don't have any choice. I want to ask you a question, uh, Karen. Um, you said you always loved the Lord. Um, you, you weren't taught by your parents uh, about God because they didn't know God. They didn't uh, go to church, even though they forced you to go. Uh, how do you come to that revelation that you always love God? Did, did, uh, did it start when you went to uh, church before? Uh, did you hear the born again message when you were at church? Well, I was brought up Catholic. I wasn't, I wasn't brought up as a born again Christian. Um, so my parents, you know, like I said, they did go to church um, when we were younger, but then as we got older, they, they stopped going. Um, so, I mean, I, I think it was just um, something that I felt a connection with, you know, I always believed in God, you know, um, but I would tell you that I didn't have a relationship with God until I did become born again, you know, it was completely different um, relationship at that point. Did, but did you hear the good news, the gospel, when you went to church um, about Jesus Christ uh, dying for our sins and that you could yes. have a relationship with him? Yes. Yes, I did. So you um, did hear it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But I did not understand it. You know, um, you know, I went to I went to catechism. We, you know, every Saturday we had to go. Um, so we learned about God. We believed in God. You know, um, that was never a question. But there was no, um, you know, actual relationship with Christ. Because there's many people that have gone to the Catholic Church but never heard of the gospel. You know, they heard more about tradition and the religion of their faith rather than the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, so how, how was it um, growing up without Christ in your life? Well, I guess I didn't realize that I didn't have Christ in my life until I discovered um, many, many years later, you know, that I did. So, you know, um, we were a close family, um, you know, um, we love being together. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't feel like I didn't know Christ because I didn't realize that I didn't know him. Because when you're brought up in the Catholic Church and you go through um, these religious type of um, procedures every time you go to church, you think it's normal because that's all you know. You don't know anything different. Well, everybody has a void in their life, uh, Karen, um, whether they feel it or not. A lot of people do feel that void and they try to fill it with things. Yeah. Um, and without Christ in your life, there is a void. And, yeah. and, and um, did you sense that void that was in your life um, um, when, uh, without, uh, you know, without the Lord in your life? Or did it you not even come to your mind like there's something missing in my life, but I don't know what it is? Well, I mean, to be honest, I don't think I felt like I was missing anything um, when I... Um, was younger, you know, because we were, you know, very loved. We were, like I said, a close knit family. I think that um, as I got older and once I discovered um, the Lord, then I realized how much I did miss out on because I didn't have that relationship with Christ until many years later, you know? So, so uh, during the time uh, coming up to your many years later, um, what what was your life like? Um, you know, there's people that just go out there and just go partying. Other people just, they don't go partying. They just go, uh, to tr because there is a void. They, they yeah. go uh, shopping or they, they become uh, readaholics and read books and mm -hmm. uh, go vacationaholics. What was your life like uh, without Christ as you got older? Well, without Christ in my life, I would say, you know, um, I got I got married when I was um, 22, I believe. I think I was 22, just turned 23 um, a couple of weeks later. So, um, yeah, my husband was uh, a musician. You know, we were out every weekend. We we danced. We, you know, partied. We did, you know, we did all the things that, you know, you think that is normal, 
you know, uh, things to do. Um, and you don't think there's anything wrong with it because at that point, again, neither one of us had a relationship with Christ. So you don't really realize the significance of what you're doing until later on when Christ comes into your life and you realize, wow, I really missed out on a lot of, a lot of stuff, you know? <laughs> uh, basically uh, what it is, uh, Karen, um, is this is what uh, the world says is norm. Right. Uh, this is what uh, you're doing, uh, the way people are acting. Uh, this is the normal way because it's a law or, or because of uh, peer pressure. Uh, let's go kind of do this and get involved in this. But but when you come to Christ, um, th then you kind of start to get knowledge of, hey, thank you, Lord, for showing me the truth. Uh, right. from from believing a lie and um so so uh when, when you before you had jesus in your heart um you, your husband uh, came to christ first uh because we had him on the show yes and and uh, <laughs> um what was your reaction to when he came to christ disbelief <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, when when you're with somebody for so many years and, you know, they've acted and done things a certain way and you're used to that way when they totally do a 360 and. Um, um, so it, it it's it's disbelief, but um, it was also. Um, a an awakening to a change and and you could see the change that occurred within him you know um from um he was never a, a bad person um i don't know what the word i'm looking for is the fact that um you know you could just see the love of Christ, how it changed his heart, you know, um, about what was important in life versus what he thought was important in life. Well, he was a musician, you said, so uh, yes. that's probably what his life was. Um, uh, yeah, outside of being married with you, yes. um, uh, it was like, uh, and, and uh, a lot of musicians are, are pretty wild. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, so, so now you're seeing, um, the born again experience right uh happened to him now at that time karen were you and your husband going still were you going to church or did you kind of uh back away from that experience well before he was saved he never went to church i always went to church but i went to the catholic church um you know when i went through different things throughout my my life my marriage you know, I went to church and I would pray. That was something that I've always done. I've always been a prayer warrior. I've always prayed. Um, and um, I always prayed for change in my husband. I changed, uh, prayed that, you know, that he would, you know, um, change from certain things, you know, that was happening. And, um, and, and eventually he discovered the Lord and, and there was a tremendous, tremendous change, you know? And so um, did his change kind of make you a little jealous for what he had and um, kind of um, not what, what, what you were experiencing? Um, no, I wouldn't say jealous because I was happy. I was happy that, you know, um, he found this new love and this, you know, um, this relationship with Christ. But, you know, after you're with somebody for so many years, you know, you have to kind of be a little cautious and not believe that all of a sudden that this person can be so changed. You know, they have to um, basically prove to you that it's real. It's not it's some it's not something made up. It's not something you know, that I'm just going to do for, you know, a month or two, and then I'm going to go back to my old ways. You know, you, 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 you know, you have to have um, that optimistic um, thought, but then again, you know, in your head in reality, you're thinking, you know, is this really true? Is this really happening? Is this change really going to stay? 
So Karen, um, did anybody um, come to you uh, besides your husband? Uh, you, you did say you heard the gospel uh, in church, but you hadn't come to Christ. Now, when you were older and going to church, uh, did you still hear that gospel or was it more of a tradition of the, the formality and uh, did any other human being outside of the Catholic church come to you and to talk to you about Jesus before your husband? No. So um, I would say it was more religious and um, really a, a regular every type of uh, occurrence when you would go to church. It was, it was more of a formality. Um, nobody um, prior to my husband going to, um, you know, a Christian church. Uh, no, I never heard, uh, I never heard anybody speak about it before. So how long did it take um, for you to know that uh, your husband had the real deal? Probably a good year, probably a good yeah. year. Yeah. yeah, because, you know, um, you know, you think that somebody's being a hypocrite when they're acting a certain way for so, so many years and so long. And then how can all of a sudden this miraculous change happen? You know, because it was virtually, you know, overnight once he came to, um, the church that we're, you know, going to now, which is, you know, Abundant Life Church of God. You know, he went to another church prior to that and that change he thought was happening, but it didn't last. So I think it also has to do with um, the message that you're receiving, the, um, the elders that you're receiving it from, the, um, the message that they are preaching to you, the understanding that they're giving you. I mean, it's, it's, it's trans, it's transformational, you know, um, until I would say we came to this church, um, you know, we had no relationship with Christ until we came, um, to meet the Lord at this church. And when, um, when an individual, um, gives their heart to Christ, um then you did after about a year yeah um see people don't realize there is a uh satan a devil mm -hmm. and uh <laughs> he's not somebody a red figure with a uh, with a, a pitchfork right he's real and so um when when you came to christ okay you could you could tell the the darkness from the light, from the emptiness to being fulfilled, from from having no peace to start to having peace. Uh, you said you were a, 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 a person that wasn't involved in crazy things, wild things, but yet the joy that you had is not like the joy you had now. It's, so it's like night and day. Could you right. describe your experiences uh, when you did receive Christ, how emotionally it changed, and then also about how you first understood about Satan when a, an attack came, because he always attacked and believers. Right. Um, well, I would have to say that, um, you know, um, when, when I came to the church, um, you know, my... Um, relationship with my husband was, you know, um, in, in trouble. And, um, you know, this was kind of, um, uh, a last ditch effort to reconcile, uh, the marriage. And I would have to say that, um, once I really, um, went to the church and I started to really, um, listen to the message and I started to listen to, um, you know, Pastor Greg and uh, Pastor Helen and the messages that they were speaking and, and really started to understand, you know, um, about having a relationship with Christ. 
you know, then, then my life started to, to change and to turn around, you know? Um, and I discovered that, um, you know, I had to put Christ first, which I never did before, you know? So that was the relationship that I needed to have in order to then, um, repair the relationship that I had with my husband. So until I had Christ in my life as my first love, um, I couldn't have reconciled my relationship with my husband because I didn't understand the love of Christ and the covering that he brought, you know, and how he can heal and how he can restore and, uh, you know, rearrange and change us. And that's exactly what started to happen. You know, um, once I found that relationship with Christ, that led me to be able to, you know, um, work on the marriage and change the relationship that I had with my husband, you know, because we put Christ as that center strand of the three stranded cord, and he was in the middle, whereas before it was always either my husband or it was me, it was never us together with Christ. And that's what happened. We had to bring our, our, our love for each other to the Lord first, so that we could reconcile that. And when you did that, then the peace, then the joy, then the faith uh, within uh, his um, his um, spirit was reigning and ruling in your heart. Amen. Amen. And then, and did the, so what, um, do you remember when the first time you were attacked by Satan and how the Lord, uh, you know, um, could intervene in your life, something that, that, that was uh, pretty, pretty, pretty rough because we all go through it, you know. Um, geez, I mean, there's so many things that happen, and I know, you know, they say that the closer you get to Christ, the the more you get attacked. Um, you know, that could be um, physical, um, you know, spiritual. I I don't know that I could remember something specific from you know that far back but i i will say that it definitely you know happened to make you you know question you know what you do question your thoughts you know um question your own spirituality you know question um the things that you said you knew and that you believed in in christ to know you know so those are all attacks to, to you know to put fear and doubt into you know um you know Put all these little thoughts in your head like oh yeah you're not good enough oh yeah no you, you you can't do that oh yeah you don't know enough about this and you can't handle that and you know so i think it i like i said i don't think it was one specific thing that i could say um you know happened but there's always that that process where you know um the devil tries to come in and, and take control and and make you believe um other things than what we know is to be true. So basically you're saying that um, when you came to Christ, um, you started hearing voices <laughs> that were uh, <laughs> talking to you uh, yeah. that you never heard before. Yeah. Uh, see, before you came to Christ, Karen, you didn't have to hear those voices because he had you. Uh, right. he, had you, he had you bound up in religion. And so exactly. once you come to religion, uh, when you leave your religion for the relationship with Jesus, now the devil starts coming in and he wants you to entertain those thoughts. He wants you to question those thoughts. And now you have the word of God as you're growing in grace and a knowledge of Jesus Christ to come against him. Right. And, and so now you're a believer. Um, did you start to share uh, the good news right away with people uh, that were friends of yours or people uh, that you uh, that that um, you know witnessed the gospel or or did you kind of wait or how was it was it like a um, um, a child having his first Christmas or her first Christmas <laughs> <laughs> or was it later on like somebody who ha had an outer thirty third Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, I think it's the excitement is there. I think you definitely, you know, uh, try to spread um, the good news right away. The thing is, is that, you know, people are funny, you know, um, you can approach, you know, um, friends and, and family members and 
they don't want to hear it, you know? Um, so I think it's all in the way that you approach people. I think it's all in the way that um, you present things because people, you know, at my job, family members, um, friends call me all the time to, to pray for them, to, um, you know, um, speak with them to get them through certain situations because they know I'm a, a, a woman of faith. And, um, you know, I believe, you know, um, that, that God can, you know, do all things, you know, and, you know, the, the power of prayer, you know, so uh, I think in the beginning, probably it was, um, you know, that excitement that you want to share it. And then, then you had to be a little cautious because you want to draw people in, but you can't, um, overwhelm them with um being that person on this the street that's screaming about christ and you know if if you don't um do this you're gonna you're gonna die you know if if you don't believe you know you're gonna go to hell so you have to be able to speak to people and get that point across without you know um pushing it down their throats so to speak making it as though it's their idea to hear what you have to say and presenting it so that they they believe you and they accept it. And, and the best witness, uh, somebody once said, Karen, uh, preach the gospel, uh, and if necessary, use words. Uh, uh, so the Bible says, let your light so shine that all will see Christ within you. And, um, uh, and I, I guess basically, uh, some of the people were like you were when you first saw your husband, and your husband said, um, I'm new and cry I went like that and then you say oh right <laughs> like that and 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 so uh probably th that's what happened to people um that that you first came to mm -hmm. uh to talk to uh, about the lord and so um your relationship with your husband now I would think is better than when you were 22 years old and uh, Absolutely. you were just newly <laughs> married and, and had a wow, let's have a great honeymoon and a great life and everything. And it's probably better now uh, than it was ever before, correct? Amen. Yes, absolutely. We'll be married 45 years uh, this year. So, um, Praise yeah. the Lord. And how many years as, uh, as believers now? Um, I was saved in uh, 2006, and I believe he came to Christ in 2005, he, uh, like a year before me. Yeah. Spoken 15, 16 yeah. uh, great yeah. years and yeah. many, many Amen. more great years. And thank you, Karen, Amen. for sharing uh, your heart and the truth. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, we, we thank the Lord for people like Karen who are honest and tell the truth. You know, she was religious. And in the beginning, she heard the gospel of Jesus Christ as a young child, but she rejected it and received Christ because she didn't know how to uh, what it meant to be born again. As she got older, she became religious. And that didn't work. But finally, she came to Christ. And her whole life has changed. She have eternal life. She's not going to die and go to hell. And her sins are forgiven. And she'll be eternally with him. Make the right decision. Come to Christ. And your life will be changed. And you'll have eternal life with him. Thank you for watching our broadcast today. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole Oh,